Michael Smith. Uh, what are you doing at Six Farm? Uh, performing arts, double B-Tech and media, double B-Tech. Part of the forces are you planning to join? Uh, the RAF. Any particular? As a physical training instructor. What kind of things do you do? Uh, you get the recruits or even military personnel up to standard with the fitness. So. We go shooting, uh, we go hiking. It's, it's an all-in-one program. Arms two, three, move. They learn a lot of discipline with not only just the movements of drill, but it's a lot of self-regulation. Physical fitness is fairly important because you have to stand straight and you're not allowed to move. You have to be mentally fit as well because you have to be focused and you have to know when to do the right movements and not be early or too late and so that we all look as though we're one unit. The drills require a considerable amount of precision. Obviously, not my strong suit. Thank goodness there's more to being a cadet. Sometimes we... Um, who's your inspiration or just your motivation for doing this? Um, well, when like, obviously when you're a little kid, you hear about all these stories of SASR, for example, and I've read a lot of the Chris Ryan books, and just since then I've always wanted to be a part of forces, really. Yeah. Are you ever planning on going into service, like actual active service? Uh, Could you see yourself doing that? I can, yeah, because it's part of the job really. Uh, if it comes around, you got to do it. Would you be willing to go abroad for service, like Afghanistan, anywhere? Uh, yeah, I would, cause it's handy because I'd like to travel as well and you can do it with the forces. Um, what are you currently doing to contribute to, to get into the armed forces? So what, what are you doing outside of college, anything like that? Um, I'm, I've been a part of the Air Cadets for about three years now and I'm also doing my Duke of Edinburgh award and just boosting up all stuff to go on the CV. What kind of things are you doing the Air Cadets? Um, well, I've been promoted so I'm a sergeant at the moment and basically through that you have to take drill, do responsibilities down at squadron and like I take the sports down there so keep them up to standard. So. Um, do you have any friends who are also joining up that you know of? Obviously you might have made, made friends in the Air Cadets or anything like that? Uh, yeah, there's a couple in the Air Cadets and there's also a couple more at college that uh, join in the Army, the Royal Marines and yeah, them two have gone off. When you do go to the Army Service, what will you miss about college currently? Um, Mostly because the friends probably that I've made at college because when you get to this stage you make lifelong friends. We all shit ourselves. <laughs> But then I came over the net saying that it was the pre-scene ID um, and they've just detonated it. So thanks for telling us, because we all just shit ourselves. <laughs> Are you aware of the dangers of being in the RAF? Yeah, there's well, always dangers for forces, so you have to accept it and just get on with it, really. Doesn't it ever scare you or put you off? Um, well, I was originally going to join the army for frontline, but then I thought, Got my head into gear, so I just thought different parts. But <sighs> hey, do you know that was a big explosion? Like, can you imagine if one of the trucks had gone over that? Do you enjoy all the training and everything you're doing? And yeah, you, yeah, it's brilliant, really. Yeah. So you think you're going to be happy when you get, finally get into the RAF? Yeah, I think I will be. Name's James Kirkham. Serving in the Royal Navy, I'm an able seaman. I've been serving in the Navy for 10 years, and I'm currently to, about to leave to deploy for six months off the east coast of Africa and in India, doing anti-piracy, drug smuggling, and people smuggling prevention. What's your sort of best experience in the Navy so far? Um, the two weeks I spent in St. Petersburg, Russia, I'm doing public relations out there. Went in with a NATO task group into Russia, and it was also at the period of um, it was in I think 2005 when the, they kicked the British diplomats out of Russia and that, and we, the only reason we got in was because we were part of a NATO task group, not a British flagged vessel. Yeah. And there was a lot of public relations work we had to do there, especially going out, going out in uniform, meeting, greeting, going to speak with the diplomats and trying to re-improve the relations at that point. 
What do you miss most while you're stationed abroad? It's just the family, really. Yeah. Uh, they, most of your things you used to get transited back to you, but it's mainly just family members you miss because you're limited to, what, 20 minutes of phone calls a week. Has the Navy, like, changed anything about you personally? Um, I like to feel it's made me a lot more confident in myself and a lot more aware of what goes on around, uh, around the world. How much do you see your family? Like, while you're away, how often did you see them? Um, I could have seen them mu as much as I want. The, the armed forces yeah. is just like a job. You go home every night. Yeah. Okay, but sometimes some people in the armed forces don't don't live like that. They live in quarters. And I had a, a little bit of both. Yeah. So sometimes, you mean like on a weekly basis, how long did yeah, I see yeah. them? Sometimes I never saw them for, any of them, for um, four months five months at all, then sometimes I would see them every week. Uh, what inspired you to sign up? I think the motivation was to get away from home. Remember, I was 17 when I joined up. Yeah. So my motivation wasn't joining up, my motivation was getting away from where I lived. At 17, you've got no money, no job, so joining the armed forces is an ideal way of achieving all of that. Money, hanging out with your mates, and, and having a good time, and going and seeing where, where have you, uh, what kind of places have you visited while serving? Well, you've got to understand that I, I've been in the Army yeah. for three years, then the Royal Marines for 22 years. So that's a, a long time to yeah. with it. So I've been most countries in Europe, all over the UK, North and South America. I've been to the Far East uh, and the Middle East. In the Far East, I've been to um, Singapore, Malaya, Hong Kong, Brunei, uh, Indonesia, parts of Indonesia. Yeah. And uh, in the Middle East, I've been to Oman, uh, which is a, a Gulf state in Africa. I've been to Africa a few times, a couple of times. Been to the States quite a lot of times. What didn't you enjoy while serving? Being away from home, yeah. that's the first one. Guard duties, nobody enjoys them. That's probably it. There's not a lot to not enjoy, really, yeah. because you're a young guy, you've got money, you're hanging out with other young guys, you're having a good time and you're going to nice, interesting places. Mm. There are bad things about every job that you, you learn to accept because you're getting paid for them. You don't get paid for the good things yeah. in a job. I, I didn't get paid for um, going out to nightclubs in Singapore. I didn't get paid for that. I got paid for being on guard in Singapore, or you know the, the things I didn't enjoy. That's what you get paid for. You know, just being away from home was the hard thing. Yeah. Really, that was the big thing. That and no servicemen like that. None of them. Like, even if they haven't got wives and families, if they've got girlfriends and things, or just their friends, they don't like being away from home.